Добро пожаловать в штаб квартире Бинков. Welcome to Binkov's headquarters. I, Commissar Binkov, present you showdown between F-35 and Su-35. Due to the complexity of the topic, this is the first of two videos. Instead of a one-on-one -on -one dogfight, videos will compare the two 35s in a more realistic situation. The setup is, the attacker is using four planes to strike ground targets. The attacker is aware of defender's relocatable early warning radar. That radar could in reality be engaged by additional platforms or be joined by other sensors. To limit the variables, the scenario will assume only one working radar that won't be threatened. Two multi-role strikers and two fighter escorts comprise the strike package. Strike planes are to overfly both targets, bomb them and report on their status. Sukhois will fight against F-35A. Both will use plausible loadouts for US and Russian Air Force available by the end of 2017 without systems that haven't yet been certified. Outside this scenario, target distance may favor one plane's range over the other. F-35 falls behind the Sukhoi in this regard. But if threats to Sukhoi dictate it flies portion of its mission at low altitude and or at high speed, then practical range of Sukhoi would drop, possibly below range of F-35. Getting back to the scenario at hand, attacker, full of fuel, goes towards the island. He chooses not to use the most predictable path. Scenario starts with attacker using Su-35. They are flying with radar turned off, so it doesn't alert the defender. Attacker sensors will detect defender's radar emissions. Attacker will descend, staying just under radar horizon. That way the enemy will have less time to react. Eventually, the radar would detect them. Flying higher would then become preferred, as it would allow for greater speed. That again gives less time for enemy's reaction, and provides altitude to be traded for energy if a battle does happen. What the attacker doesn't know at this point is that two pairs of F-35s are orbiting the island. They get informed of incoming threat and keep their radars turned off. They approach the threat in a specific fashion to maximize their stealth advantage. They don't use afterburners, so their infrared signature doesn't give them away. Sukhois enjoy a speed edge over F-35, so defenders could not hope to approach the enemy from the sides, as that way they would not be able to catch them. But they would still arrange the two pairs for optimum approach, being guided by the ground-based radar. The big question is radar signature. It can only be estimated, as such data is simply not publicly given in a proper context. Only one official statement was made concerning it. Our scenarios will assume the figure given was for the best case scenario. We will also assume the Russian claim of radar's detection ability as truth. Forward lightnings could turn on their radars, get a firing solution and launch their AMRAMs from a greater distance before flanker's own radars could detect them. But that would result in missiles very low on speed by the time they reach the enemy. With 8 missiles and 4 enemies, spending missiles just for harassment would be wasteful. Flankers would at one point start getting glimpses of something. Focusing their radars, they would confirm two incoming contacts. Infrared sensors would not yet pick up anything due to lightnings not showing their exhaust. One option for the flankers would be to abort and run away. They are, after all, faster. The distance involved would mean flankers could, even if barely, outrun the AMRAMs. Assuming flankers go on with their mission, they would not be able to ignore the immediate threat. Best course of action would be to use all available planes and go after those enemies. Sukhois can't know if there are additional threats. They can safely assume their speedy approach ensured no one is right behind them, but further threats could still be in front quadrant. Su-35's radar has possibly the widest scanning area for a jet fighter in the world. They could monitor even the side approaches. What they might not see is the second pair of lightnings. Those F-35s would however be too far away to engage the Sukhois at the same moment as the first pair of lightnings. Flankers would all have to go on the attack if they are to maximize damage to the incoming threat. Enjoying a greater missile load, they might start shooting their missiles even before F-35s do. Lightnings could fire their first salvo moments later, also a bit on the edge of their effective range. Both sides would use defensive measures. Sukhois have chaff and onboard jammers. 
F-35s would deploy tow jamming decoys on top of chaff and jammers. Even the best missiles miss often. When first tested, Amram showed high hit chances. But in actual use, even in better situations than against Su-35, those chances dropped. Against an opponent which knows when to start evading, using countermeasures, those chances would fall further. Estimates of percentages close to historical hit ratios of near-peer situation in the Gulf War will be used. Flankers jammers would mean actual Amram lock-on range would suffer. Early Salvo would harass F-35s and focus them on avoiding missiles rather than getting in the best situation for follow-on launches. But F-35s could use their hidden friends and turn towards them as they dodge Sukhoi's first salvo. The second pair of F-35s would turn on their radars to get target tracks. Sukhoi's would know by then someone else is approaching, but in all the commotion of dodging the first salvo and chasing the lightnings, proper reaction would suffer. R-77 missiles have a somewhat less capable seeker, so tracking a tiny radar signature would require them to rely on course corrections for most of the trip. Those corrections would further be interrupted by evasive maneuvers as flankers dodge missiles. Flankers could be firing more, choosing between the first pair of lightnings low on energy or the second pair posing a bigger threat. Second lightning pair would also launch, again on the edge of their effective range. Early launched R-77s fired without proper target track from a distance and going against countermeasures would miss or hit one plane. First salvo AMRAMs would be going against Sukhoi's jammers and chaff, trying to obstruct the missile's view. Both sides have capable missile approach warning sensors, enabling pilots to maneuver and deploy countermeasures in a more time-precise fashion. First salvo AMRAMs would rely on course corrections from the other lightnings. Having no fake targets and facing a clearer radar return, the AMRAMs in this scenario will be modeled as hitting one or two flankers. Missiles from downed flankers would lose course corrections and be neutralized. Another salvo of missiles from both sides would be fired, hoping to lock onto survivors. Chasing the runaway lightning pair, a couple of R-77s would be inadequate for a hit. At the same time, Amrams for the second lightning pair would reach their targets and down another Sukhoi or two. F-35s might very shortly suffer on their own. Scenario will model one more downed. The survivor would seek protection, running towards the first pair of lightnings lining up for their own Amram salvo. Last surviving flanker would be out of modern missiles. Even if the previous Amram salvo misses, remainder is likely to finish the last Sukhoi. Flanker could have already launched its remaining missiles. The distance would by now allow even the infrared guided missiles to be used, but given their old technology level, they are unlikely to score many hits. Had the setup been six intercepting lightnings, additional F-35 pair could have been concealed. Lightnings could afford to waste AMRAMs for harassment from afar and run away, downing up to one flanker. As the rest ponder a chase, four emerging lightnings could get a chance to fire. F-35s might lose one member before remaining Sukhois get wiped out. No verdict shall be given just yet, as another variation of this scenario awaits in the second video. More general comparison will also be made, as well as turning of the tables, a scenario when Sukhois have the advantage of defending the island. If you liked my analysis, you can always subscribe to this channel. And if you really like Binkov, you can support his videos via Patreon.